I'm the calculus professor and today I'll be talking to you about partial fractions. In problem number 13, we'd like to evaluate the integral of 3 over x minus 1 times x plus 2 dx. All right, so to evaluate this integral, we're going to break it up using partial fractions. So that's what I need to do first. Notice that the bottom of this fraction is already fully factored out. So I can already write it into its decomposition. It's x minus 1 times x plus 2 on the bottom, 3 on the top. And that's going to look like an a over x minus 1 plus b over x plus 2. All right, uh, so now that I've got it written out, the reason that this is an a and this is a b is both the bottom, <coughs> um, both of the denominators are linear factors, and so we just get an x minus 1 and an x plus 2 on the bottom. Okay, let's clear the fractions out. If I clear out the fractions, what I get is I get 3 on the left side, and on the right side I get a times x plus 2 plus b times x minus 1. All right, so that's the exact same expression, uh, exact same equation. I just multiplied both sides by the denominator on the left. All right, now we're ready to solve for a and b. Uh, the way I'm going to do it is by choosing good values of x. And by good values, I mean values that make things zero. So in this case, maybe I'll choose x is equal to 1. If x is equal to 1, well, the left side is obviously 3. And on this side, I get 3a. And this term is 0. So I just get that a is 1. Then I can let x be equal to negative 2. On the left side, I get 3. And on the right side, I get this is 0. And negative 2 minus 1 is minus 3, b. So b is negative 1. All right. So I've got a is 1. I've got b is minus 1. So I'm ready to rewrite my integral. So now instead of computing this integral, the integral I'd like to look at is the integral of a over x minus 1. Well, a is 1. So 1 over x minus 1 uh, plus b over x plus 2. b is negative 1. So minus 1 over x plus 2 dx. Both of these are in a form of a natural log. And how do I know that? How do I just look at that and say, oh, that's a natural log? Well, the derivative of the bottom is the top. If the derivative of the bottom is the top, it's in the form of a natural log. So the antiderivative is a natural log. So this one is ln of absolute value of what's on bottom. And this one, the minus, if we kind of ignore the minus, this is a natural log. This is ln absolute value x plus 2 plus c. And we're done. So uh, the beautiful thing about partial fractions is we can take something. We don't know how to take its antiderivative, but after we break it up using partial fractions, it can be something very, very simple to take the antiderivative of.